Hi, my name is Gökhan. I'm from Atexin. I'm the CEO of Atexin. Now, you've got a great big separate lift thrust machine here. Yep. It looks very spectacular. You've yeah, polished much. it nicely for Farnborough, so it's looking at its best. But it's, um, it's not the sort of Chinese, because it's not a Chinese design, it's your design. So instantly I can see some design considerations in there that yep. you've made that makes it not off the shelf. How long did you actually take to make the aeroplane? And did you fly it as an aeroplane first or a, se or a separate lift thrust, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So, uh, as ATEX, we started operating on UAVs in 2013. The first models that we built was runway. And then customers came back, back to us more and more and they said, look, we need someone that's runway independent. So that's why we started focusing on VTOL since 2014. So in 14, we built our first vertical separate test, uh, separate lift thrust system. And from one point on, we just have seen that there's no point in using the runway first to verify the VTOL, but because they are completely separate yeah, systems. Okay. So uh, since 2016, we're only building VTOL systems and catapult launch systems, which is basically the same for us. And we do the design, this is the fourth model of this system. So it's constantly keeping, keep evolving. It's changing, the design has changed every nine to 10 months, and we keep making improvements on it. But the um, internal structures and the autopilot software it stays always the same. So we make some improvements, but we keep the core always. Uh, and and VTOL is the only thing that we're focusing right now. I think I'm right in saying you can find models for some of your platforms running RG Pilot. Am I right? No, and this one not. Probably not. Not this one, but yeah. other systems yes. you have. Yes, other yeah. systems are, yeah, they use Pixel yeah. and Ardu Pilot as well. But uh, you have to understand, we started as an autopilot company, so we're using only our own autopilot. And we even experimented with Ardu pilots in 2013, but yeah. then found it very hard to get to some point. And we started uh, start from scratch and we built all the hardware, all the software from C and C++ from the scratch. So it's it's your own, so we own a software and hardware running throughout. Yeah, it's 100% it's in-house. Okay. So we designed the electronics, we built the uh, carts, we put them together in a box, we put the software on it and then we fly. We even have the cloud GCS now where you can use the system from the cloud instead of needing an, a fixed system on, on a computer. So is that using a 4G, 5G to communicate or RFD yeah. radios? Yeah, the basic setup, standard setup is with RF. So we have two links, 869 for command and control only and 2.4, 10 megabit for video downlink and high speed, but they're also backed up. But we also experimented with 4G, 5G. So we have now a new modem in uh, where we can use unbiased SIMs and we can get uh, wherever we have cellular receptions up to 20, 30 megabits per second. And on YouTube, we even have a, a video of a live stream while we were flying which means the UAV was streaming this during the flight to YouTube itself. Oh, right. yeah, so yeah, direct that, to YouTube. Yeah, direct to YouTube. Yeah, so. like, subscribe and all those other things. Oh so in this yeah. bit here, No, I would like to do it with your program. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, I would like to. Like, subscribe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As we need to run across the screen yeah, every once in a while. Hit that bell. Um, so in this bit, how, how is this one fitted? What is this for now? Is it for delivery? Is it for... This model, as I look at it now, what's it fitted to do? Look, this one, as you can see, we here, here we have the payload bay. Okay. So, oops, let me get in. So this payload bay can be a, uh, attached from here, and we also have a lid there. So you can either put something from up or down, but this area is completely free to use for anything. So some people are using it to uh, for gimbals. So for ISR and ISR prob uh, prob um, operations, so to have an eye on the sky. We have a project going on with, uh, with the universities in, in Ireland, which is the Mistral project, where we are trying to put in a relay, radio relay, uh, with the Defense Forces. That's a project with the Defense Forces. We were going to put a radio relay to, um, to build an antenna two kilometers up in the air yeah for just increasing the range of UHF 
to 160 volt. And we also have another project uh, with the Irish Navy and Limerick University, Tyndall and UCD, which is focused on building the next version of the naval UAV that the Irish Naval Air Force, Irish Naval Forces are going to use. So um, it's, it's all, it's, it's basically what we're trying to do is we're just trying to provide the platform and you can put anything on it. It's basically a platform. It's like a car. You can use it for transport, for cargo. We have another project going in on in Greenland where one of our customers is going to do medical deliveries up to 200 kilometers, but at a height of 400 feet, which is pure SATCOM, long flight, very close to the ground. I think that's the main purpose that this is fit for. And, and as, this, as it stands, what sort of weight could that lift? This one can, this specific one can lift five kilograms for six hours of flight. Uh, but we are the next version that's coming out end of this month is going to be capable of doing 10 kilograms for six months and for the guard project we are aiming 10 kilograms and 10 hours so it's and increasing you, talk, you spoke about Ireland so that's obviously uh, operating under EASA rules yes over there so this is quite a big machine how, how does this fit in the EASA rules and we're at Farnborough that's in England so how does that fit in English rules yeah. at the moment. So in both configurations, it's specific category UAV. So it's up about 25 kilograms, but less than 150. It's specific category, as you know. You apply for permission. You do your risk assessments. In EASA, you do the SORA. We have done that. We have got permission to fly at uh, Ireland, Wicklow. So we can do operate there. But uh, for CAA, there is another route now that, now that they're out of the European Union and we keep, we are also applying for flight permissions there. Okay, so at the moment within the EU and what's, what's Greenland? Who Greenland is, is not EU, it's, it's, Greenland? it's no, Where's it's, Greenland? I don't know. Somewhere in I, Greenland? I don't know, but our, uh, the, the company that's going to fly it is Falk and this is a Danish company, and they right. already got permission to fly there. So I think they're still uh, with the Danish Aviation I think Authority. They are, aren't they? Yes, I think yeah. They are.